Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday morning to you all. Hope you guys are having a great start to your day, a great weekend out there. You know, it's the last full weekend before Christmas weekend coming up next weekend. So hopefully you folks are knocking out any kind of last second Christmas shopping or whatever you got going on as we don't have many more days left. But I got you an update weather wise on what's going to happen specifically for today. And then, of course, we'll give you an update, some revised information from overnight into this morning on what's going on with this Arctic blast and now this major storm system that we now know is going to happen. It's just trying to figure out who's going to see the wintry side, who's going to see the rain side. Everybody's going to see the cold. All the cold is following in behind it. Everybody's going to get blasted by that. We'll talk about how cold it can get in this video. We got very detailed last night, and we're going to get detailed in this video, too. We're going to get very detailed again tonight, but... Um, definitely, you know, check out last night's video. Not a whole lot has changed, but a couple changes. Certainly, are, we're, we're going to keep changing until we get to the storm. We're not going to know what's going to happen until it happens, right? So we can continue to try to tweak this thing and figure out what's going to happen for you folks. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. Last night's video was my biggest video since, I believe, January. So I really appreciate people continuing to uh, support me and what I do and my love for the weather and just give me an audience to talk about what I love, my passion, which is the weather. So I really appreciate it. Like the video. It really helps to get these videos out there. It does a lot if you do like it. And uh, hit me up on Twitter, guys. I know not a lot of people have Twitter and social media in general. It can be toxic, but... If, if you do have it, you know, it's a great way to follow along, get, you know, almost hour to hour updates, especially when we start to get very active. I like to have a lot of fun on there, too, and uh, joke around and stuff. It's all good humor, uh, but definitely a great way to follow along. If you guys got anything that I can pray about, pray over, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so, too. We can all look out for one another and glorify God doing it. So let's get rocking this morning on this sun beautiful Sunday morning. Definitely get some things done outside if you need to get some things done, especially in the central and eastern U.S., because you're going to freeze your tail off if you wait too long towards uh, uh, the end of the work week. But what we do know, we already know this, 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, it's going to be very cold. We, we've known this for, I would say, three to four days now, that the cold is certainly coming. Of course, is it going to trend a little bit colder, a little bit warmer? We're starting to really figure out how cold it's going to be. But the epicenter of the cold is really going to be from the 22nd through the Christmas and then maybe a couple days afterwards, it's going to be below average and well below average. As you can tell, this big, obvious, big, dark blue, purplish area right on your screen, we know it's coming. So let's check out a couple things. How cold could it potentially get? We'll talk about that, then we'll talk about the storm signal, and then we'll talk about what's going to happen for today, which today is going to be a relatively quiet day. But of course, I always stay true to these daily forecasts. So if you're wondering about today... You know, skip ahead, I got timestamps up. And I'll remind you, if you ever get confused about what day I'm talking about, you know, because sometimes I'm bad about that. I don't mention the day. Look up here. The day is up here. And, uh, you know, as far as Zulu time, I'll, I'll break that down for you guys. But uh, if you're always, conf if, you're, if you're ever confused about the day, it's up here. WED, obviously, is for Wednesday, the 21st. So that's where we'll start off for the afternoon of the 21st, the technical first day of winter. You know, it's pretty chilly all the way to Dallas into the 40s. Um, Oklahoma, you're, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, you're already dipping below freezing. You know, Arkansas is already cold. But the, the, true cold, cold, the true cold core air mass is coming. It's dropping down. Look how cold it is. It is up in the uh, Dakotas, Minnesota, well below zero for high temperatures, not low temperatures. But as we're getting into a Thursday morning, the front begins to drop well east of the Rockies, which is right in here. Uh, and look at these temperatures in Kansas. You, you're in the single digits in one part of the state and below zero in teens, which is cold enough for the far south uh, east part of the state with a cold front, with a cold air mass basically hasn't fully gotten to the region yet. But look how cold it is for the northern plains, for Minnesota, for Wisconsin. Not just below zero, but well below zero. And I haven't even showed you guys the wind chills. I'll show you guys that tonight. But they are, there's going to be a lot of wind with this, and I'll give you a sneak peek on that here in this video. But there is going to be a lot of wind directly behind the cold front. And some of these wind chills are going to be ridiculously cold. In fact, you already got wind chill advisories and watches up for areas of Montana and the Dakotas. But um, as we're working our way through uh, Thursday afternoon, I'll stop it. These are potential high temperatures, 10 degrees in Oklahoma City. Maybe single digits for Tulsa. Only in the 20s for Dallas. Amarillo, the single digits. Um, all of Kansas, the single digits are below zero. 
Okay, Missouri, Columbia, Missouri. Maybe in the single digits for high temperatures. Kansas City single digits. St. Louis, the teens. You know, I'm not about to list out every single geographical city and location, but you get what I'm saying. This is starting to ooze south, and by the time we're waking up Friday morning, the latest GFS ensemble from this morning, it has it in the single digit digits in Dallas, and single digits deep into Texas in general. Has it below zero for Oklahoma City. So this looks a little bit colder than what I showed you last night. This is very, very cold temperatures. You're waking up to, you know, this is saying seven degrees for Memphis, seven degrees for, um, you know, Little Rock. This continues to move uh, southward and then southeast and eastward. This is high temperatures for Friday, only showing 12 degrees in Memphis, only 19 degrees in Dallas. T to me, you got to believe, is this a little overdone as far as the cold air? It's trending a little bit colder as we're working closer. So that should tell you that this might be the real deal. A lot of times this trends a little bit warmer, but it's trending a little colder. These are high temperatures for the day before Christmas Eve. The entire state of Louisiana is below freezing just about. Mississippi, Alabama, the same way. Let's go on and work eastward here. And uh, here comes the cold front blasting through the Carolinas and Georgia, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland. And, uh, you know, this is temperatures you're waking up and just into, and just into the 30s, for for example, into Charlotte, uh, you know, uh, Columbia, 40s in Raleigh. But look as you – well, I'm sorry. These are actual um, – this is this is the morning time temperatures for Friday morning. Look at this. You know, the, the, the cold front has not quite moved through. I'm sorry. I was talking about the afternoon. This is Friday morning. So I just talked to you guys about these areas. Look look at Indiana, Illinois, Ohio. Notice much colder in Illinois than it is Ohio, but it's because the cold front is working. It's working west to east, so it hasn't quite got to you guys. So if you're wondering why isn't it as cold in our area, well, the cold front hasn't worked in. So, you know, you're in the single digits areas below zero for Illinois, teens in Indiana, you know, 20s and 30s just for Ohio. But look as the cold front oozes through, you your temperatures drop in areas like Charlotte, Columbia, Atlanta, basically all, all, everywhere where the cold front clears. This isn't one of those moderating cold fronts. This is a sharp cold front where the temperatures will drop throughout the day. As soon as the cold front moves through, everything plummets. The dew points, the temperatures, everything. So even outside of the storm signal, the storm system in general, this gradient with this Arctic front is very impressive. If you're along the eastern seaboard, um, I mean, it's going to be incredible. You wake up Friday morning, and it's like, okay, well, this is just normal low temperatures for Friday across areas. By the time you're leaving work, if you work Friday or just get into the afternoon, it's below freezing. And some areas, well below freezing. Like, this is afternoon highs for Friday. I mean, Birmingham, 21 degrees? I mean, that's ridiculous, right? Your afternoon high will actually happen at midnight when the cold front comes through. So it just depends on where your geographical location is and what specific day and where the Arctic front is. But as we're moving into Saturday morning, it's now showing 19 for Columbia, teens for um, uh, Charlotte, uh, Atlanta. You're flirting with the single digits, three degrees in Nashville. Okay, the plateau of Tennessee might get below zero degrees, according to the GFS ensembles. you got to wonder if it's underdone, because if you turn around and you look at the EPS ensembles, you know what, we won't look at that quite yet. We'll compare and contrast tonight, so stay with me tonight. But look at these teens. You got teens in the western panhandle of Florida. You got to see, man, this is trended a little bit colder. So we just got to watch this, you know, because if it gets too much cold, we're going to have issues. We're already going to have issues with this. You're going to have issues with pipes bu bursting. And uh, yeah, this is very cold. And then we get into Christmas Eve around afternoon high temperatures. I mean, most of Georgia, the Carolinas, will struggle to get above freezing. And certainly the further. Northwest you work, you will not get above freezing. Single digits for high temperatures in areas of the Ohio, Ohio Valley for Christmas Eve. And then this cold front's clearing the northeast, and you're, you're, you're below freezing for the northeast. And then as we're getting into morning lows for Christmas morning, not quite as bad. Temperatures begin to moderate, but still very cold. I think your coldest day in morning in general for basically this part of the country is going to be Christmas, morning, Christmas Eve morning and, and, and uh, Christmas Eve day. So incredibly cold temperatures as we get past this we start to moderate a little bit but still very cold i mean we get into the the morning after um christmas and it's still in the low teens the single digits for many areas 
So a very impressive cold air mass. So let's talk about the storm system. There's kind of like a pre-appetizer event, if you will. Some snow will break out in Kansas, maybe northern Oklahoma a little bit later tonight. Um, in fact, you know, we'll, we'll go on, you know, let, let's check this out really quick. Uh, snow, Kansas City. Uh, it's wanting to show snow in Arkansas, but I, I don't know if I believe it with this first little system. The second system, which is the main system, I could believe it more. We'll talk about that here in a second. But, you know, snowing in areas of uh, Kansas, uh, southeast Nebraska, Iowa, and then this kind of breaks up. You look at the latest HRRR model for this, and uh, it shows it well. We're in range. Area of snow breaking out tomorrow morning just before daybreak. This is snowing in Kansas City as you're waking up tomorrow. A little bit of rain snow mix in far northeast Oklahoma. I think some areas in northern Arkansas could certainly see some flakes flying around tomorrow morning. Uh, but this looks like a cold rain down here. Maybe some sleet of flakes mixed in. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but this is a very small little quick moving system. It's snowing throughout the early afternoon hours and then it just kind of fades away. And then maybe a little bit of uh, some snow flurry, snow showers making in into St. Louis into the overnight hours tomorrow night into Tuesday morning. As far as snowfall from this little event, maybe just outside of uh, Kansas City could see one to two, maybe three inches of snow. Same deal for eastern uh, Kansas in general. But we'll see if this little event overachieves. Someone might squeeze out a three to four incher in these areas. You know, Iowa a couple inches, but this won't be a big event at all. But, um, you know, you, you go back to the GFS in general, and we'll start checking this out here. And I want to make sure we're in the right area. Yeah, we'll go back to the GFS and how this evolves. We get past this system. Here comes the Arctic front. Look at this light snow breaking out. These snowfall ratios are going to be much higher than 10 to 1, uh, meaning uh, basically 10 inches of snow um, is equivalent to 1 inch of liquid. So basically, if you the higher you get up, like you get up to 20 to 1, that means your snowfall ratios are even better, meaning you'll get more snow fall, more snow would accumulate to one inch in liquid equivalent, if that makes so. If one inch of rain falls, if you turn it into all snow, the higher that ratio is, the more snow you get. Meaning basically the colder temperatures that the snow falls at, and there's other factors too, like how cold the ground is, the more snow you get. So here we go. Snow breaking out late Wednesday evening along this Arctic boundary with a surface load that's going to pop off the eastern side of the Rockies. And uh, this snow was falling in, in, in areas of Nebraska, Kansas at very cold temperatures. This is the latest GFS, Iowa. Everything's going to stick immediately. And this is dropping now. We're getting into Thursday morning of the 22nd. Snowing pretty good and pretty much a good chunk of Kansas. Snow starts to move into areas like Kansas City, even St. Louis, you know. But I think if you're if the, if we take the GFS as if it's going to happen, which is definitely different than the European still, but they're starting to kind of mash together a little bit. This will bring in a heavier area of snow into areas of southern Kansas, southeast Kansas, and then would bring some snow into areas of Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma City, all the way down into Missouri, all the way down to Arkansas as we're getting into Thursday evening. Of the 22nd and uh, this would start the ball game for this is when it really cranks up low pressure riding through you got a heavy axis of snow from Little Rock Arkansas all the way up through Indiana Illinois southern Indi uh, uh, Illinois uh, southeast Missouri and then you got rain beginning to change the snow in areas of um, western Kentucky and Tennessee you know so we'll go on and switch it to the eastern U.S. and see how this is evolving and you keep this going and first off you know you look at this little snow the GFS wants to show uh, this little low pressure riding off the eastern seaboard before the Arctic front comes through and wants to dump some wintry weather for you folks in Pennsylvania New York State we'll have to see how that trends this would kind of be a pre-event before the big system moves in wants to dump a wintry mix of you know maybe some ice snow for late Thursday evening into the overnight hours into Friday morning, and then it changes the rain. But then we look back here, look as we're getting into late overnight Thursday night into Friday, basically the middle of the night, it's snowing heavily in the Mississippi Valley here, the Quad States region, Southeast Missouri, Southern Illinois, um, Indiana, all the way up here to Southern Michigan. Um, it's snowing heavily in Memphis. If you're looking at the GFS, these models are still tweaking a little bit. I know people are getting frustrated, like, why are you even talking about this if it's you know, this far out? Well, if I forecast this something 48 hours out, um, half the people won't even know it's coming because you can't even relay information that fast. It's part of forecasting is uh, trying to find the storm. First off, we find the storm signal. We have found it. It's obviously going to happen. 
And then we start figuring out those fine details of who's going to see the snow, when is it going to change, and how much we're in that range now. So we're still tweaking, guys. We're still tweaking back and forth. Low pressure riding through um, uh, Kentucky from this model. Rain quickly changing the snow from this Arctic boundary. It's riding through. Rain changing the snow for Nashville as we're getting into the wee hours of the morning, Friday morning of the 23rd. Still snowing in Memphis off this model. It's snowing in areas of northern Mississippi, even Huntsville, Alabama, getting a little bit of snow. This is changing into heavy snow for Indiana. This could be a blizzard. I'm telling you, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but there is the possibility for a blizzard in the areas of the Ohio Valley. Just with all these strong winds, heavy, wet snow blowing around, it could potentially be a blizzard. Getting into Friday morning, you got rain changes in the snow, even for the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina and Tennessee, Western Virginia, and then Kentucky are all changing to all snow. And then can we get some last-second flurries from the back end to Atlanta to Charlotte, maybe Columbia? Don't know. Don't know. we got to figure that out. A lot of dry air ushering in. The air mass is drying out very quickly. But then we stop it here Friday, right in the middle of the afternoon of the 23rd. Strong winds, moderate to heavy snow from Michigan to Indiana to Ohio, and then switching from rain to snow in Pittsburgh, West Virginia, seeing snow. But it gets tricky for this area, especially right into here. How much moisture is left over when this makes a changeover? We're getting into the morning of Christmas Eve, and then the Arctic air begins to settle in, and then we have to watch what happens after this, which um, we'll talk about more probably tonight. But there is a little bit of a signal behind this. Right, here it comes. Look at some snow breaking out Christmas morning across areas of the Mid-South. Even got flurries in North Carolina. we got to watch this little system. I talked about it last night. There's a lot of energy flying around after the system. you got some Gulf moisture down here, and you got something trying to connect right into here. It's just will it. Um, but we'll talk more on this tonight. We will because, honestly, that's all my hope that I'm settling in on for my neck of the woods here in Columbia, South Carolina, is can we get a sneaky system after the big system that moves through? But, you know, European, we'll go through this a little bit quicker. It's a, it's just a little bit different. Here's that first system. Um, we keep moving here in time, and here it comes, all the cold air, and then the snow breaking out, you know, Wednesday evening, snow breaking out over all those areas I just mentioned. We're getting into Thursday morning. The, you know, the latest Euro has a little bit of snow making a little bit deeper into Oklahoma. This would bring a period of snow, especially from Tulsa, points northeast in Oklahoma. It's snowing in eastern Kansas. Uh, it's snowing in Kansas City. The snow's just starting to move into St. Louis as we're getting into about midday Thursday of the 22nd. But, you know, the latest Euro brings some heavier snow into northern Arkansas. The entire state of Missouri sees moderate to potentially some brief periods of heavy snow. Low pressure starts riding here. It's switching from rain to snow in Illinois. Chicago, you're seeing some light to moderate snow. We'll stop it right here. We'll switch it to the eastern U.S. This is around, this is around Thursday evening. Now, I can tell you, you compare this with the GFS. And the GFS is slower it's slower with the system. You notice how it backed everything back up. You look at the European, and this is going to switch it to probably, yeah, I knew it was. It was going to switch, it's going to switch it to um, the 06Z. But basically, it, the European is quicker, is what I'm trying to say. It's quicker with the system, brings it through. Does it change much? Not, not a whole lot, just because all the cold air is behind it regardless. But we got to watch that because timing is a little bit off. And we'll talk about that a little bit more tonight. But, um, you know, the, basically... Uh, the European would, everything that I'm talking about, the European would bring it in maybe about six hours earlier. So we'll stop it here Thursday afternoon, uh, about, you know, about the middle of the day, Thursday afternoon. Um, well, the after, Thursday afternoon wouldn't be the middle of the day. You get what I'm saying. Thursday afternoon of the 22nd, the day before Christmas Eve. Well, the day before, uh, okay, I'm getting my timing. You, you guys are on me. The 22nd of December. <laughs> it's snowing in Missouri, snowing in Illinois. And look how the rain quickly changes the snow as the slow pressure moves through. Arctic air ushers through for uh, next Thursday evening. You compare that with this for Thursday evening, the snow's still all the way back here. So you get what I'm saying, guys, with that? you know. So uh, just, just to compare and contrast, and I hate how it keeps switching like this, but you get what I'm saying. One's slower than the other, but you keep this rolling, you're getting into Thursday evening. Um, you know, it's snowing, it's snowing in Memphis. It's snowing in the Quad States region. Paducah, Kentucky, it's snowing. The entire state of Illinois is snowing up to Chicago, Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, you got snow. 
Um, it's snowing pretty heavily in the uh, northeast corner of Arkansas. You can continue to keep this pushing. Even the Euro, the least wintry kind of model here, has snow down here in the northern northern areas of Mississippi. And a brief period of uh, rain mixing and turning to snow, even for Huntsville, Alabama, maybe as far south as Birmingham. And, uh, you know, it's snowing in Nashville. If I stop here in the middle of the night, this coming Thursday night into Friday morning, Kentucky are changing the snow, Illinois, heavy snow. Rain changing the snow for Ohio. And then you got it's snowing in the southern Appalachian Mountains. Boone, Asheville, Knoxville, maybe Chattanooga. Um, up to West Virginia, Friday morning, you got it's finally snowing. The cold air moves through. And uh, I think you're going to squeeze out a lot more snow in the, in the in southern Appalachian Mountains than maybe what these models are trying to show. But here it is, right here. This moves through. And, and there's that first little system that showed up on the GFS. We got to watch this because. You know, this first system, as we're getting into Thursday morning of the 22nd, before all this, this could bring some snow to those areas that just got hit by an ice storm in western Maryland, uh, northeast areas of West Virginia, um, even close to Pittsburgh, you know, State College, Scranton, could bring some heavy, a heavy kind of period of snow that changes the rain, unfortunately. But then the Arctic air quickly filters in, and here it is. You got rain changing the snow for most of the interior northeast and then that backside moisture moves through and then what about that system behind it here it comes swinging through a little bit of flakes showing up as we're getting into the 26th and 27th but just not much showing not much love from the king euro with that system after christmas unfortunately but this is potential snowfall from the blend of all models it's different than what i showed you last night Shows, the, shows you the idea and I, and I like what it's saying from both events from st louis to, to kansas city maybe four to five inches of snow. Um, Chicago, you got, you know, six to eight inches of snow from this model. This is the blend of all models. It is what it says. It blends all the model guidance together. Iowa, this is basically all these areas have a chance to see a white Christmas. But then you look in northern Arkansas, look, a few inches of snow showing up. We're starting to get a little bit further south. Um, Oklahoma, a few inches, especially in the northern and northeast part of the state. Um, and then we switch it to the eastern U.S., and this is what it shows for basically all the way through the morning of the 28th. You know, Tennessee is going to be tough, but you could squeeze out a few inches of snow. And the thing is, is a few inches of snow would normally melt very quickly, right? But with Arctic air funneling in, this could put the snow on the, keep the snow on the ground through Christmas Eve, uh, Christmas. But the Ohio Valley, Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, some areas can might be, maybe could, you know, reach that foot total i think michigan gets absolutely crushed by this um widespread foot to maybe two foot uh, snowfall totals just between lake effect snow bands the moisture from this system a bunch of things energy flying around after the system you guys are going to certainly see a white christmas and this is going to fly through a couple days before christmas i can't reiterate this enough this is great we're seeing snow i know i talk about snow like i love it and that's because i do but remember, this could be this is going to be a dangerous system for traveling. I haven't mentioned that much, and I should have. I should be mentioning it. But traveling-wise, this is going to be a dangerous system. And one of the big reasons is is because you see the this is the front right here. Look how it's just normal gusty winds, not a whole lot going on. But as soon as this front moves through, not only is the Arctic air moving behind it, but you got 30 to 40, maybe 50 mile per hour wind gusts. These are wind gusts. You know, and this is for late Thursday evening this of this week. I mean, look at in Illinois, Indiana. This is what's snow falling. So this could be blizzard conditions for these areas, guys. This is dangerous. This is going to move through blizzard conditions in the Ohio Valley potentially in this period. Um, is it going to be enough to prompt blizzard warnings for the Ohio Valley? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, you know, look at the Carolinas. You know, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds blowing through potential gusts, not sustained gusts Friday morning with this front and listen I mean the winds are going to remain about a day or two after the front and it is going to be bitterly cold for Christmas Eve when you're you know with your family you're not going to even want to go outside but it's going to be bitterly cold very very cold with these winds this blows through the northeast and uh, I mean look at this this is for Friday afternoon of the 23rd 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts showing up on the European model and then it's just windy everywhere. I mean, pick your poison, pick your state. Very, very, very windy. And, uh, you know, it's going to probably be a high-end windy event for the Appalachian Mountains. So uh, pretty crazy stuff. Now, you know, you look at the system behind it. Like I said, we're watching it. 
you know, some snow flurries move through Christmas Eve uh, evening, you know, sets the tone. You guys have already seen snow at this point, but maybe another area of snow moves through. You guys who live in this area right into here, you guys could have multiple rounds of snow over the next several days. A very wintry week setting up uh, just before Christmas. You know, flurries moving through Arkansas, areas in the Mid-South. You're going to show my area some love right here, right on Christmas morning? I sure as heck hope so. I really do. Uh, it would just be, a, even if we just saw flurries in my neck of the woods in the Carolinas and Georgia, it would be the icing on the cake. Even if we don't get a major winter storm, give me some flurries for Christmas Day. But I certainly think Christmas Day, and when we get in range of these, which is, by the way, one week out still, when we get in the range of these short-range models, I think we're going to have a lot of snow showers, snow flurries flying around that you're just not seeing much of right now. But you got moisture right off the coast of the Carolinas. So it's pretty wild to see. And one thing you'll notice on the Canadian model, the one that came over came out last night, it shows a more robust area. But this is for the evening of the 26th. And then this moves through, tries to pop off a low pressure right with some cold air lingering around. And if you were to keep this run going, it would bring an ice storm into South Carolina. But that's, you know, 10 days out. And, the, cold, and, and the, the Canadian's kind of weird with how long it kind of lingers this cold air. But uh, you see the system right here. This is the energy associated with the system behind it. Look how this, well, I'm sorry, this is the big system. This is pretty obvious. It's pretty bright to your eyes. You see it right here. This is a deep digging system right here. Moves through. It, it closes off really early on in the Mid-South. But here comes the little energy behind it. It's, it's very small. Nothing compared to its big brother that moved through. But here it is. It's positively tilted. You see how it's tilted like this? We call that a positive tilt. This is a negative tilt, which symbolizes a stronger storm. But you've got a lot of energy right here for Christmas midday. Um, but is anything going to connect? Can it, can, it, can it get neutrally tilted and can it tilt? If we can see that, we'll start to see more moisture showing up. But even behind it, you got energy flying through. So as this Arctic air is kind of moving out, you're going to have some opportunities. It's just not showing up. And I know I keep beating the drum on this, but sometimes you got to look past what you actually see precipitation-wise on these models. We certainly need to watch out just after Christmas. So let's talk about what's going to happen today. We'll breeze through this very quickly quickly because there's not a lot going on. The southeast, hardly no moisture. Maybe some flurries flying around West Virginia. Outside of that, uh, the, 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 that system coming through is starting to move through. They're kind of like the pre-appetizer event, like I just mentioned, but... You know, maybe some rain you're waking up to tomorrow morning. The northeast, the only thing to really report on is these lake effect snow bands that will be quite intense flying off Ontario and Erie. And, uh, you know, these will be quite intense. You know, burst of snow, several inches of snow possible over the next several hours. You look at the blend of all models just south of Chicago to Erie. Erie could pick up seven, eight, nine inches of snow. And just south of Buffalo, over a foot of snow is possible. This band coming off Ontario is going to be quite strong where over a foot of snow can fall. So you guys just keep getting snow. I saw an um, image, I think it was towards the end of the Buffalo game last night where it was snowing pretty good. But the South Central U.S., enjoy the weather. The Arctic front's coming. Get, 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 those, get those things you need to do outside where your family come into town because it's not going to be comfortable doing it the last second later this weekend. It's going to be impossible, really. Um, but like I said, later tonight, some moisture begins to move into Oklahoma into Kansas, and then tomorrow you'll wake up to a little bit of snow in areas of Kansas City points east, points west. Uh, north central U.S., besides just some lake-enhanced uh, moisture flying with the uh, Great Lakes, pretty quiet day, not a whole lot going on. Um, but temperatures today, Arctic air beginning to ooze in, but this really isn't the worst of it. These are high temperatures, though, for the Dakotas, single digits and below zero temperatures. Uh, you know, Minnesota, not much better. Uh, below zero temperatures, single digits, low teens. Locked, you're already locking into a cold air, air mass in the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes region. You're already cold ahead of this system. You're going to do nothing but get colder. This is a high-end event coming, guys. I can't reiterate that enough. I, I need, I'm going to start discussing a little bit more of the safety issues and just uh, life-threatening issues with this because this is going to be a significant storm system, guys. I'm telling you. So that's all I got, guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. I'll be with y'all this evening. Have a great Sunday and get ready because something is coming.